Good morning to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Wednesday, August 19th, 2020. You know what the 20th means, right? When we get to August 20th, that is typically the beginning of the climatological ramp up, the rapid increase in chances of development in any given season. Uh, August 20th is when Dr. William Gray, the late Dr. Bill Gray, would ring the bell over at Colorado State University signaling the beginning of the peak time of the hurricane season. You know, we usually look at it as mid to late August on through about mid-October. It's about a 60-day window when the peak activity occurs, and we are just about there. So in today's discussion, or at least the first video of the day, I'll be doing two of them today. Uh, let's take a look at what's happening. I mean, here you go, right on cue. Three areas to monitor, and uh, we have 97L here. Now an 80% chance of further development over the next five days. Um, 98L off to the east of that, which is basically 9 out of 10 shot, you know, 90%. And then a new disturbance coming off of Africa now, a beast of a tropical wave. Uh, so far, 20% chance of development for that. So the tropics and the Atlantic definitely busy. In the Pacific, though, we do have our hurricane here. Closing in on the Baja, luckily it is starting to weaken. Still a formidable hurricane, and some of those outer rain bands, as you can clearly see, starting to reach up here towards Cabo San Lucas and vicinity. Um, these are more than likely just high clouds over here, but maybe some showers and storms, bursts of heavier rain, uh, making it over to the coast of Mexico, uh, the mainland part, outside of the Baja Peninsula. Uh, fortunately, this hurricane, Genevieve, whatever you call it, <laughs> it's still stuck on that, uh, will pass, you know, instead of coming right up here, it's going to pass off to the west of the Baja Peninsula, but should be some good wave action. If you're not careful, though, on the beach, those breaking waves can cause issues, so just be alert about that. Hurricane watch in effect for parts of the southern Baja tropical storm warning there in the blue and this again is going to pass off to the west of the Baja Peninsula but the wind field is big enough that you could get some tropical storm conditions there um, so anybody down in the Baja Cabo San Lucas area tag me you know let me know Twitter uh, on the YouTube comments are welcome and what do you got you know we, nobody's gonna be there for this one chasing it so to speak uh, so we have to rely on people that are already there. And again, luckily, it's not going to make landfall. And, it, and I've looked, and it's just, there's not enough moisture the way this big super giant heat ridge is sitting up here. The moisture is just not going to be able to advect, or what we call moving horizontally, out of the Pacific and into the desert southwest or southern California to any great extent. So this is not going to be a big rainmaker for the desert southwest usually in latter August into September. Well, sometimes you get these systems that'll come up um, and even on into early October, they'll maybe even come up the uh, Gulf of California and dump some moisture into the Southwest, but this is not one of those, <coughs> excuse me, situations. All right, uh, in the Atlantic, lots going on, three distinct features to keep a, an eye on. 97L here, uh, more convection or thunderstorm activity associated with it today that, than we have seen. Then we have 98L, very large, and it looks to me like it's finally trying to come together maybe around a common center somewhere around there, maybe. Uh, starting to get that sort of S shape overall to it. You can see that as I draw it in. You know, it's just a little bit more banding. Um, the energy out here to the east is starting to fade away. This is starting to concentrate more. And then here's our very large tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. So those are the players. You know all about it by now. Uh, and if we look at it from a vorticity perspective, and this is from 0900. So let's see if this updated to get a 12. Yay, it did. All right, I love it when that happens. 12 UTC vorticity signature um, image. And you can see that, uh, first of all, there's the hurricane in the Pacific. You know, again, I'm a big fan of this product. 
Uh, this is interesting. There's the vorticity signature. It's not very strong, but it certainly is round in its appearance there, trying to bundle that energy. 97L down there in the Southern Caribbean. And you know, once it gets past 70 longitude, which it is now, it can start to go. And so we're going to focus on this more and more. And then looky here. All right, so there we go. There's the vorticity starting to show up. And I promise you, I just refreshed this. I didn't, I'm not cheating, okay? You know, uh, you look at the vorticity map, and then you go back and you look at the satellite. And I was suggesting that there might be some kind of a center trying to form in here somewhere. And lo and behold, the vorticity map um, confirms that, that there is, it doesn't confirm a center, but this is where the highest concentration near a center would be. And you can see more energy trying to bundle in there. Um, and so, we see the stage being set here and before I get into the next segment I'm gonna just say it something is very weird with the global models neither the GFS nor the European the ECMWF the Euro develop any of these two systems to any great extent which is bizarre considering the National Hurricane Center showing 80 percent and 90 percent respectively for 97 and 98 L um, what is going on? Uh, I really, I'm very, very confused by this. I've never seen such a favorable background state overall. There's not tremendous amounts of dry air. This is not July. We're right at the beginning of the peak time of the season. Dr. Michael Ventress and others talking about this convectively coupled Kelvin wave. Uh, you know, fancy way of saying very favorable period. The Madden-Julian oscillation everything should be there that these systems will eventually develop but the global models at least the two powerhouse gfs and the ecmwf the euro there really not doing much you know so i'm prefacing that that this next segment here when we look at the models with that statement that okay i'm going to show you the globals and then we're going to contrast that with uh, some of the statistical hurricane models these tabs over here so first of all, the 6Z um, GFS, the Global Forecast System, and I'm just going to play it, you know, just put it into motion. And you can see down here, there's the system, tries to develop, but just doesn't do much. Runs across the Greater Antilles and kind of poops out, and, you know, not a scientific term. Emerges on the western side of Cuba by day six, uh, and that's that. And then the system coming off Africa now in the Central Atlantic, and it's not even doing much. Uh, I guess this might even be that system. I don't know. There's another one there. But bottom line, uh, here we are. This would be August 25th, firmly in the peak time of the season, really starting to ramp up. And as we go back and look at these systems, you know, just not much. And in fact, you see 97L goes across the Yucatan and on into Mexico, um, I just, I don't know. That's very strange. And the European, same kind of thing. The initial map from last night, there's 98L, here's 97, and there's the G hurricane out in the Pacific. Uh, so this goes 24 hour increments. So here's day one, day two, three, four, five. You know, the only system is the one coming off Africa now. Out there, kind of a weak signature to it. I just don't get it. I really don't. Okay, and so when we go and we look at the guidance, uh, so this is the 6Z uh, hurricane models, as we call it, and you can look at all the different ones in here, uh, but really the, the TVCA, the TVCE, these are the consensus models, you know, where you take all of these and you get this consensus, and there they are, the yellow and the orange right there for 97, uh, what the heck, so it comes up and makes a turn into the Gulf. Uh, whereas the global here, that's the AVNI, comes in and just keeps it over the Yucatan. So that's a pretty good bifurcation, uh, fancy word, right, meaning a split or whatever, in the modeling, which the H wharf over here aiming it towards the Florida Panhandle, uh, to the simpler advection models down here, the, the much, you know, you could run that on um, your... Xbox controller could have enough CPU to <laughs> run some of these simpler models uh, down here way to the southwest. So quite a spread at day five. But then you look at the consensus 
TVCA, TVCE, and there you go. You know, it's like, um, hmm. So we got to watch that. And even the HMON is right in there, the HMNI. That's the track. The intensity for 97L is intriguing, uh, generally an upward slope overall, albeit, you know, gentle, you know, which is good. It's not this big sharp, uh-oh. Yeah, so, but, but it's not like it's flat. There is a little bit of a slope here overall. The AVNI, which is the GFS, is just like, nope, not happening. But the H wharf, you know, gets it up to about a category one. I, I don't know. I just I'm very very confused by all of this data. Uh, and then we look at 98, and again look at the TVCE, the TVCA. Then this is much more tightly clustered all through here, a track right through the islands. So you know the track seems to be locked in by most of the guidance. But then look at the intensity for 98. This is a much more dramatic system. Uh, the scale goes all the way up to Cat 3 on this, and it's a fairly gentle slope, but it's much more um, aimed towards a solid hurricane, as you can see. Uh, something falling apart outside the office. The HMON here getting it into Cat 3, the H Wharf, and when those two agree, uh, and then even the statistical model there, the ships getting it up into category one hurricane intensity. Um, that's interesting. And you know, you go back to the track. Yes, you guys over here in the islands need to be watching this. Uh, even as far south, maybe as the area just south of Guadalupe here. But I doubt it. I think it's going to be more concentrated to the north. But you never know. It is a large system, and so you know we're talking about. Look at these little time stamps in here, 72 hours roughly through here, 96 hours in here. And it just depends, you know, the, the track spread, along the track spread in terms of time, uh, days four, days five over here, something like that. Uh, so you guys in the islands, specifically the northeast part of the Caribbean, U.S. British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and points east from there, uh, need to be watching this. You could have a developing tropical storm right on top of you. And let's go back to the satellite animation. That's a pretty large feature. And you take this whole mess or mass or whichever you want to call it, and you move it through this way. You know, just think about the whole system moving that way. That's what you need to look at. Not some center, a little L. You're not having an L move over you for a low. It's that giant weather feature, all right? And in terms of what 97, you know, it's starting to blossom. Uh, and so Jamaica, yeah, you could get some rain showers, probably much needed. Maybe the Caymans, but I doubt it. And then you guys over here in the Yucatan, and possibly even interest here. And yes, there are interests out in the open water. Come on now, the oil interests. We got to watch this because I don't know what the heck to make of it. And I mean, when do you ever hear me say that? And if I can get my... Uh, Come on, where am I? There I am. When am I ever just completely, I'm not like lost, but I don't understand why the global models, especially the two powerhouse models, are not doing much. And I guess you could try to break it down. We look at this from a scientific perspective and you just apply logic, okay? What are the reasons? Number one, there's something wrong in the modeling. Uh, what could that be? Some have speculated that maybe, and this is where we, you know, you have the opportunity to just go off a cliff here. 5G, and no, it's not the same 5G bull hockey we've been hearing about with the COVID stuff. There was concern that as ubiquitous 5G spectrum, and that's all radio talk there, became widespread, that's what ubiquitous means, globally, that it could interfere with our satellites' abilities to gather data that gets input into the global models. There are reports about this. It is scientifically documented. It was a concern. Maybe that's happening, okay? I'm just throwing this, trying to figure it out. Maybe it's a lack of the airline data. Yes, the airlines have picked up. I mean, I flew out to Arizona at the end of July, so I know that planes are flying, but it's not like we had before March when all of this 
dead gum virus, as I call it, uh, <laughs> came about. I smile because what else are you going to do at this point? It's so frustrating. So airline traffic, and if you don't understand that, um, airliners, a lot of the commercial aviation industry has the ability to input data that goes into the global model system, what we call data assimilation. And the lack of those data points from the airline industry kind of, you know, taking a hit here has reduced the skill of the models. And does it ripple around the globe? You might think, well, what, what could that have to do with the tropics? Well, everything's connected. You know, the, the great circle of life, the Lion King himself said it back in 1994, I think it was. And it's true. And everything in the weather is connected. The old chaos theory is true. Not as dramatic, perhaps, as the butterfly flapping his wings and you get a tornado here or a hurricane there. But when you do reduce one thing, it has a long ripple effect down the line that spreads out over time. That is why we have this, you know, tightly clustered in the beginning, but as you go out into time, much wider in terms of variability. So little effects now, little changes end with big impacts later in the modeling. So that's the other possibility. Something's wrong, okay. Uh, or these systems just aren't going to develop. The, the Atlantic is not ready. You know, that I guess would be what we call uh, Occam's razor. The simplest solution, all things being equal, is usually the correct solution. You know, roughly speaking, that's how that principle works. Um, that maybe, just maybe, sorry, screwing this all up, these just aren't going to develop because conditions aren't as favorable as we thought. I have a hard time believing that, but you then you got to worry about confirmation bias. You know, we get anticipation that something's going to happen. And when it doesn't, you try to figure out why, and then you want to know, well, am I anticipating it too much? Um, anyway, interesting times ahead for sure. Uh, at least we have the here and now that we can depend on, the satellite imagery, uh, and we can look at the next 24 to 48 hours with some pretty high confidence in terms of what's going to happen. So we got that. All right, put that in our back pocket. Bank on it. Yeah, we'll look at this two days at a time instead of five days, I guess. Weird, very weird. All right, so that's the look. a look at things in the morning here uh, based on all the overnight runs. Later this afternoon, we will take a look at what's going on uh, again, and we will base it all on the morning guidance. We'll see if it clears things up or if it just makes things more muddy. So there you go. We shall see. Uh, I am on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. If you're following on YouTube... You know, it's youtube.com slash hurricane track. Hurricane track is the brand. And we are supported by our awesome group of crowd funders called Patrons on Patreon. Check that out. And there really are a lot of great benefits to becoming a patron. It's not just a subscription service. It's not even that at all. It's more like a cooperative. And uh, you can learn about it by clicking the link in the description of all of these videos. All right, have a good rest of your morning, and as always, thank you for tuning in and listening to me as I try to figure this out along with you. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you later this afternoon.